गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एक्टिव लर्निंग वीडियो लेक्चर ऑर्गेनाइज बाय गुजरात टेक्नोलॉजिकल यूनिवर्सिटी आई एम सिलावट मोहम्मद रईश फ्रॉम गांधीनगर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न दी सब्जेक्ट्स एलिमेंट्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू सी इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन एंड वील डिस्कस अबाउट मैग्नेटिक हिस्टेरिसिस बट बिफोर गोइंग टू इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन वी कैन रिवाइज द मैग्नेटिक सर्किट वी लर्न दैट मैग्नेटिक सर्किट इन लास्ट लेक्चर so today first of all we will revise the magnetic circuit and after that we will go to electromagnetic induction and magnetic hysteresis magnetic circuit see magnetic circuit is like electrical circuit magnetic field is like electrical field in electrical field there are charges but in magnetic field there are poles so the region around the pole is known as magnetic field we discussed about magnetic materials also there are many types of magnetic materials like ferromagnetic materials paramagnetic materials and diamagnetic materials we discussed about the permeability the permeability of ferromagnetic material is very high so that we can form a strong magnet with ferromagnetic materials in magnetic circuit we also see the magnetic density and magnetic intensity the magnetic density b is defined as the flux per unit area it means b is equal to 5 by a and the unit of b is flux per meter square or we can say weber per meter square and the magnetic intensity is h is equal to ni by l the relation between magnetic density and magnetic intensity is b is directly proportional to h it means that the magnetic density b is directly proportional to the magnetic intensity h if we are increasing the current then h will increase and finally magnetic density b will increase here today our topic is electromagnetic induction and magnetic hysteresis so in electromagnetic induction we are going to cover these topics the first is induced current after that induced emf then we will see faraday's law after that lenz law then fleming's rule after that we will see coefficient of self inductance then we will discuss about the coefficient of mutual inductance after that we will see coefficient of coupling then comes methods to find m which is mutual inductance then we will see the example of electromagnetic induction transformer and finally we will have examples related to electromagnetic induction in magnetic hysteresis first of all we will see hysteresis laws after that relation between b and h after that comes magnetic hysteresis loop then hysteresis loop for different materials after that we will see the factor affecting the hysteresis loss then we will see eddy current loss after that we will see energy stored in a magnetic field and finally we will have example related to magnetic hysteresis so first of all electromagnetic induction before going to see electromagnetic induction we have to study what is electromagnet so electromagnet is not a permanent magnet but if we are having a ferromagnetic material and we wound coil around the ferromagnetic material and we pass the current through the ferromagnetic material with any supply ac supply or dc supply then the current flows through the coil and it will induce an emf in the ferromagnetic material so that the ferromagnetic material will act as magnet <coughs> here the phenomenon of the production of the induced emf in the circuit caused due to the change in the flux linking with the circuit is called electromagnetic induction it means that the changing flux is very necessary if we are having electromagnetic induction a constant flux cannot produce or cannot induce any emf the emf responsible for the production of the induced current is known as induced emf and the current induced in the circuit 
when the magnetic flux changes is called induced current here we have a beautiful example from this figure we can say that whenever a magnet is brought towards the solenoid and rapidly inserted inside the hollow cylinder the galvanometer attached to the solenoid shows deflection it means that if we have a solenoid and we are inserting a magnet in the solenoid then the current will pass through the coils it means that the galvanometer will show deflection it means the current is inducing in this circuit and after that if we will pull out the magnet then the galvanometer again show the deflection but this time in different direction see when a magnet is rapidly pulled out of the hollow cylinder then the galvanometer again shows deflection but in the opposite direction now what is induced emf here we have a galvanometer a current flows through the loop when a magnet is moved near it without any batteries and the needle deflects the needle is deflecting it means that we are having a current now faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction there are two laws of faraday's for electromagnetic induction the first law states that whenever the flux linking with the circuit or coil changes the emf is induced in the coil or circuit and the second law gives the magnitude of that emf it states that the magnitude of the emf that is induced is proportional to the rate of change of flux linkages it means that higher will be the change in the flux linkage higher we will get the induced emf the equation of induced emf or the equation of induced electromotive force can be given as e is equal to n d phi by dt where n is the number of turns of the coil phi is the flux it means that d phi by dt states for the change in flux with changing time now what is lenz law so lenz law states that the direction of induced emf is such that the current produced by it flows in such a direction that the magnetic field set up by it and to oppose the cause that produces it and the equation is e is equal to minus n d phi by dt where minus sign indicates the lenz law now fleming's right hand rule fleming's right hand rule is used to find the direction of induced emf here we have a direction of force upwards and the magnetic field is there then the direction of current can be seen in the figure so the fleming's left hand rule states that the direction of the force is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field and the direction of the current here in the figure we can see that there are magnets and the direction of force is upward so that the direction of current is given now coefficient of self inductance before learning the coefficient of self inductance we have to see what is self induction so self induction is a induction that occurs in a circuit itself it means that if we are having one circuit and the coil is around that core or a circuit then the flux linkage will be in that circuit and the induced emf will be in the same circuit it means that we are having only one circuit we can have this example here i have a circuit a dc supply is given and a switch is there the switch is k and the dc supply is given <coughs> as soon as we close the switch the current i will be given in this circuit and the current will go from 0 to maximum the current will try to have a maximum value so after closing the switch if the current is increasing 
then there will be change in flux. And because of this change in flux, the EMF will be induced in the circuit. So, according to the Lenz law, the current will not go from 0 to maximum in instantaneous time, but the current will take some time. Current will take some time to go from 0 to maximum value. Here we can see the Lenz law. It means that if the flux is changing in the circuit, the current is trying to go from 0 to maximum value, but it will not go in instantaneous time, but it will take some time. Here comes the Lenz law. And again, if we will open this switch, then the current will go from maximum to 0 value, but again it will take some time. So, this is the effect of self induction. Now, we will see the coefficient of self inductance. We are considering a coil having n number of turns carrying a current of I ampere. The total magnetic flux linking with the coil due to the current I will be n into phi. The flux is produced due to this current I. So, n phi will be proportional to I and if we put the constant then we can have n phi, n phi is equal to L into I where L is the constant of proportionality called the coefficient of self induction. So, we can have a value L is equal to n phi by I Henry. The unit of L is Henry. If 1 ampere current is there, then the coefficient of self induction is given by the magnetic flux linking with the coil when a current of 1 ampere is flowing through it. Alternately, the coefficient of self induction is the total Weber turns per ampere in the coil. So, E is equal to we can say minus L d i by d t. Now, mutually induced EMF. How mutually EMF is induced? We will see. Here, here we have a magnetic core a coil is there on the primary side and another coil is there on the secondary side with the secondary coil we are connecting a load a load is connected to the secondary side and to the primary side supply is given we can have it is AC supply. So, when the current wheel starts flowing through the first coil then it will go to the first coil and it will generate flux phi 1 and this phi 1 flux will link through the secondary coil and it will generate secondary flux phi 2 and because of the secondary flux we get induced EMF on the secondary side. It means that we are giving supply to the first coil and through the coil through the core the flux phi will be linking with the secondary coil and the induced EMF will be generated in the secondary coil. It means we are generating or we are inducing an EMF in another coil. So, this is mutually induced EMF. Now,
see if one coil is connected with battery and second coil is connected with galvanometer. Thus it can be seen that when the current in one coil is changed, there is an EMF induced in a nearby coil. So this phenomenon of the induced EMF in one coil due to the change of current in a nearby coil is called mutual induction. Here phi2, phi2 is the flux produced at the secondary side. So phi2 will be depending upon I1. I1 is the flux, sorry I1 is the current on the primary side. So if the current on the primary side will be more then the flux on the secondary side will be more. It means that phi2 is directly proportional to I2. And here again we can put a constant of proportionality. So we can have phi2 is equal to m into I2. Here phi2 is the flux induced in the secondary coil and I1 is the current flowing in primary coil. And after that differentiating with respect to the time we can get d phi2 by dt is equal to m into di1 by dt. But d phi by dt is equal to e. So here we can say that e2 is equal to minus m di1 by dt. E2 is the induced EMF on the secondary side. And then we can finally conclude that the coefficient of mutual inductance m is equal to minus E2 by di1 by dt. Here, the coefficient of mutual induction between two circuits may be defined as the EMF induced in one circuit when the current in another circuit changes as the rate of 1 ampere per second. And remember the unit of mutual inductance. So the unit of mutual inductance M is Henry. Now we will see what is coefficient of coupling. So we are having two coils X and Y. Coil X is having N1 number of turns and coil Y is having N2 number of turns. And they are lying close to each other. The self inductance of both the coils are L1 and L2. It means that the self 